what I remember most of all is the 4000, the ML 4000 on her vocal. Because when I took it out, it was just very flat and uninteresting. And when I put it back in, it sounded, it just had a, a great attitude. It was perfect for the song. And so I saved the preset and I've been using it ever since and many variations of it. But it's, uh, it's, it's an attitude changer, you know? And um, in the past, I might have to put in 1176 along with like LA-2A and a couple of EQs and, you know, and just bump things up when the performance was lacking or, or it was recorded, you know, a bit too dark. So with the ML, it's a simple, you just pop it in and then you just adjust. It's easy. Futz box. And that's, again, that's where quite often I'm, I'm using your plugins to, to improve or repair or, you know, more like a tool. So if there's a guitar that's really uninteresting, I can pop it in there or an instrument that you might not even consider or, or a vocal, anything crazy. It could be drums. Generally, I have no problem using a multiband EQ or compressor to help remove a particular sound that's obnoxious. But there are times also when there's a sound that's lacking. It could be in a bass where the certain notes in the bass just disappear when you're listening to the song. And, you know, other than really wanting to crush it or trying to do some trickery to try and bump those particular notes up, um, whether it's in that or it's an acoustic guitar, I've always wanted to be able to just do the opposite of dipping, where when it meets that threshold, it now bumps that area up only when that particular problem occurs, not overall. So sometimes when you end up EQing it, you know, the, the problem, you're EQing it throughout the whole song. So that's, um, that's been addressed on your new plugin. It's a situation where I want to resolve a problem I'm having in a fast, easy way. I would record my band, and I had a little cassette player, and I would record the shows. And I'd go back and listen and see what was going on. And, um, and the same thing goes for our rehearsals. I had a TAC with two microphones, and I would just keep finding the balance to the point where people wouldn't yell at me that they couldn't hear their instrument, because as being a drummer, it was always going to be the loudest. Um, and then that, and that really gave me the incentive to get out of the music business when it comes to being a musician and being on the road. I didn't think I was good enough and I didn't like the life. And I got a job at Media Sound. Um, and it wasn't long before I was, you know, on the, we were allowed on the off hours to record our band or do things just to practice. Um, and I really fell in love with the process of not only recording, but, but mixing it. The part I love the most is that um, there's nothing like mixing a great song. It's the, when there's a point when you're mixing where you feel you're, it's now a record, you just move into this, into this zone and it, uh, it's indescribable. It's you just know you've captured the soul of the song now. Now you know. Now the mixing begins, and it's like getting mental goosebumps. It's a great, great feeling, and it's quite addictive. Mm -hmm.